What the heck? is going on at the drugstore. You're about to find out. Kicking this video off with new makeup, let's start off with the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. So this is essentially supposed to be a silky, weightless, liquid version of the original Poreless Putty Primer. It only comes in one shade, which they call Universal Sheer, and this is supposed to offer long-lasting makeup grip and a smooth finish. To me, the texture of this primer feels like a velvety yet hydrating lotion. It definitely feels nice and hydrating to apply, but it's also not super lightweight. It doesn't have a really liquidy, fluidy texture. It's something that's a little bit creamier and heavier than that. The pore blurring effect of this primer on my skin is good, but not great. It's definitely something that gives me a little bit of a pore blurring effect in my cheek area, but it's not to the level of something like the Cali Ray primer. That is something that like deletes the look of pores for me, and I definitely don't get that same effect with this one, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing because sometimes I think that really poreless look can just look a bit makeup -y. this is something that's going to give you a little bit of a blur, but give you a more natural effect. I really was not a fan of the original putty primer from e.l.f., so I definitely prefer this. I'm enjoying it. Is it the best primer I've ever tried? I wouldn't say that. I think it's good, but it's not something where I'm like, oh my god, my life is forever changed. My makeup looks a hundred times better. You absolutely need to run out and buy it. But it's nice. <sighs> you guys, I am sweating. Lord help me. Another new launch from e.l.f. that I literally just got in the mail last night and just put on for the first time today is the e.l.f. Camo Hydrating CC Cream. So they launched their original version of this CC cream I mean, maybe like three or four years ago now. It was a while ago. And that one, I just didn't love. It was very full coverage, like a matte finish pretty much. So it just looked really makeup-y on my skin. I was excited to try this because this is supposed to have a dewy or more hydrating finish. And aside from being hydrating and dewy, they say it's supposed to be full coverage and color correcting. So obviously, since I'm only trying this out for the first time right now, keep in mind that this is a first impression review, but I will be popping in some wear test footage from later today Day so that you guys can see how it holds up. But first impression, the texture of this is definitely a little bit on the heavier side. It's something that's creamy and really reminiscent to me of IT Cosmetics CC creams. I have always felt that the IT Cosmetics CC creams are kind of heavy and you can feel them on your skin, but they do look really beautiful and offer amazing coverage, so I understand why people enjoy them. So I get that same kind of feel with this, where it is a little bit heavier. I can definitely feel it on my skin. Like right now, I feel like I have makeup on and I definitely, I mean, I use too much. I'm thinking back to how I applied this. So I'll try with less product the next time that I use it, but even still, if I use that amount of product with any of my other favorite complexion products, I don't feel it sitting on my skin like this. However, in saying that, I do think that it makes my skin look beautiful. Like the glow is amazing. I really love that it's glowy, but not wet looking because I don't do that. And it definitely can be built up to full coverage. I would say I have like medium to full coverage with the amount that I applied because I can still see my moles peeking through. I actually love that I have those on my face because that to me is always like my gut check for level of coverage. And even though I do have, well, let me look in the mirror, not the viewfinder. I don't know, like, so far, even though I, well, I was gonna say, even though I do have that amount of makeup on, it doesn't look makeup y, but it's starting to like settle in here. Dang. We'll see as the day goes on. This might be one of those things that looks beautiful at first, but just doesn't wear well. Let us know in the comments below if you've tested this out, what your thoughts were, and what your skin type is. Moving on, we have the Revlon. No, Revlon Illuminance Serum Tint. The ingredients they're calling out in this tint are ginger root, vitamin C, and vitamin E. And 15% sunscreen. <laughs> percent? Sunscreen's not a percent. I was looking at the percents listed on the back. It's a combination sunscreen, so the actives are oxygen oxide, titanium dioxide, and zinc oxide, but please, for the love of God, do not rely on this for sun protection. It is supposed to be skincare-infused makeup that offers light to buildable coverage and a soft satin finish. Satin. I said that weird. This was quite a bit heavier than I was expecting. It's something that I would consider to be a cream for sure, and a thicker cream at that kind of like a wet cream. I don't know, right away as I was blending this out on the back of my hand, I was like, mm, I don't know that I'm gonna love this. I could just tell there was something about the texture that I wasn't obsessed with. I agree that the coverage is buildable from like sheer to light. However, in order to build it up to just be lighter in coverage, I do think it starts to look and feel a bit heavy. The finish of this is really pretty. That was definitely my favorite part of this skin tint. It's glowy to like slightly dewy, but it's not overly dewy. It's not something that looks really 
juicy or wet on the skin. However, I do feel like this emphasizes pores and texture for me. So because of that, and because of the fact that I just don't really love how it feels, I don't love to apply it. The coverage is just not really what I'm looking for. It's just not for me, not a bad product, just not something that really you know, like fits my needs, so I will not reach for this again. Next is L'Oreal's new True Match Radiant Serum Concealer. This is supposed to provide instant dark circle coverage, visible depuffing, ironing out fine lines, and is supposed to have a lightweight crease resistant formula that's infused with 1.5% hyaluronic acid plus caffeine to provide 24 hour hydration and all day wear. The texture of this is incredibly, incredibly thin, but it's kind of hard to describe because it's not fluid and runny and liquidy like a serum would be. It's something that is almost on the drier side, but doesn't feel drying, if that makes sense. Obviously this has creamy components to it, otherwise you wouldn't be able to blend this out, but for a cream, it's something that's on the drier side, which I think actually works in this product's favor. Something that I actually really enjoy about this is the doe foot. It's very flat. And like, at the end of the day, does this really do anything for me? No, but I think it just feels kind of fun to apply. But if you were gonna be using a darker shade of this to contour or something, then that nice sharp line might actually come in handy. Even though this claims to have instant dark circle protection, I don't feel like I get full coverage with this concealer. It's more like light buildable to medium. And it's also not something that I would agree is radiant in finish. It's definitely more of like a natural to satin matte finish on me, but I really like the look of that. So I have this on my eyes right now and I do like it. The color might be a little bit too light for me, a little bit too brightening. Other than that, I think it looks pretty nice in terms of like making my under eye area look fresh and alive. However, it definitely does settle in creases a little bit. And as the day goes on, I do notice that becoming a little bit more pronounced. Nothing major, definitely not like a heavily creasy concealer, but not crease resistant, which didn't they say that? Yeah, they did. Yeah, there's a lot of you know, major claims here about the skincare benefits, deep puffing, ironing out fine lines, being crease resistant. I don't get any of that, but it's not bad. I don't know. This is one I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on. Moving on to blush is another product in the Revlon Illuminance range. It's their Gel Serum Blush. And I picked this one up in the shade Enchanting Mauve. Enchanting. The texture of this is actually very different from the skin tint. It has a gel-like quality to it that to me makes it feel more like a gel lotion because it's thicker than a serum, but it doesn't feel as thick as that skin tint. It has more of like a slippery feel than that. Like a little bit of a silicone feel, I think. Not fully like a silicone primer that makes you feel like your skin can't breathe, but there's a little bit of a silicone element to it, which I like. This is very sheer initially. It does blend up to have light coverage, but it's not something that's gonna give you major payoff even with it being built up, so just be mindful of that. However, it builds nicely. I don't have any issues with patchiness and it has a nice glowy finish. This is probably one of the most natural looking blushes I've ever tried. Something that I think you could truly just wear on top of skincare and it would look like your skin, but I just don't love the shade that I picked up on my skin tone. So I'd be curious to see what other shades that they have and see if I could find something that's a little bit better suited for me. No, I am. I am dripping in sweat. The other blush that I picked up is the new e.l.f. Camo Liquid Blush. The amount of e.l.f. in these drugstore videos, like it's just one after the other after the other. I'm not complaining, it's fun. I picked this up in the shade Suave Moth. This right here is very, very pigmented. You only need a small dot, definitely similar to something like the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in that sense. And it also has a lightweight kind of cream-like consistency that I'm able to seamlessly work with in terms of blending and shearing it out or building it up to have full coverage. I always appreciate that in a blush when it's nice and versatile. It has a natural finish on my skin. It's long lasting. Was this their attempt to dupe the Rare Beauty Blush? It doesn't have, you know I mean, like the same kind of packaging, which I feel like they've done with most of their other dupes, so maybe not, but it really does remind me of that. But again, I feel like there's just something about this shade that I'm not obsessed with. So I'm gonna have to see what else they have. I feel like when I saw their shades in the store, I was like, uh, I kind of hate everything. Oh my gosh, yeah, like that really, really light peach. No. Yeah, I don't know that any of these shades would do it for me. I'll wait till the next drop. Milani launched new cream bronzers and I was really excited excited to try them out because I used to use their cream foundation as a cream bronzer. I would just get a deeper shade. I really liked it for that, so I was excited to try something that's actually formulated to be a bronzer. I got this in the shade Hey Honey, in case you're curious. This has a very, very thin, slippy texture. 
It's something that at first feels like it's gonna be too wet, too slippery, too messy, but it's like a cream to powder texture. As you blend it out, it just kind of like goes powdery, which is amazing if you have oily skin like me. This is so easy for me to just slap on and build up. I don't have any issues with blending. I don't even feel like I have to blend this. I can just put it on and it looks great. I can also apply this on top of powder very easily. That's actually how I'm wearing it today. I did the House Labs powder bronzer in the shade that's a little bit more cool toned and then just did a little bit of this on top to kind of like add a little bit of warmth, but then like mesh with that house labs to get my perfect shade. And I think it looks really pretty. I actually love this. The finish is something that I feel is satiny matte. Doesn't look flat and dry, definitely has some life to it, but is not something I would consider to be glowy. I like it. I'm not sure if this is new or just new to me because I got this in PR, but Lottie London came out with or already had a highlighter called the Diamond Bounce Illuminating Highlighter. I was sent the shade Frosted and my eye was immediately drawn to this because this looks a heck of a lot like the diamondy kind of finishes that I love. Hello, are you gonna focus? From both Makeup by Mario and Fenty Beauty. It is definitely quite a bit drier than both of those formulas. The Makeup by Mario one is, oh my gosh, almost like, it almost feels creamy. It's just so soft. And the Fenty one isn't as creamy as that, but more than this. However, this has the exact same kind of effect as those products where it's kind of just like an overspray of glitter and there's no full like disbursement of pigment throughout. Did that make any sense? In the sense where it doesn't look like you have colored eyeshadow on, it just looks like you have nothing with some sparkles of glitter, which I think is really pretty. Definitely something that for me is too glittery on the cheeks to use as a highlight, but on the eyes, I think it's really nice. Elf, again, we're not surprised. This is the new Elf tubing mascara, which they have clearly put in packaging to make a nod. What's the name of that mascara? Oh my God, the Thrive Cosmetics mascara. Everyone loves that tubing mascara. I feel like that is the tubing mascara of all tubing mascaras. So this is clearly their attempt to dupe that. This is the Lash Extender Mascara. Here's what the wand looks like in case you're curious. It's something that definitely applies the mascara well, but it kind of hurts. Like for me, this is probably one of the pokiest mascara wands that I've ever tried. So just be aware of that. And this mascara, Seems like it shouldn't be as good as it is. Spoiler alert. It's very thin and definitely dry. And usually those two elements in a mascara make for a terrible mascara, but it somehow works with this. Only if you work quickly though. If you wait too long to apply additional layers, then it's impossible to build this up. It'll just get stuck because of how dry it is. So make sure you're working quickly to add more product on. But once you do kind of like, you know, coat a few more times, build it up, I think it looks great. The separation's amazing. The length is really nice. I actually posted a video the day that I used this for the first time and I saw several comments being like, what is on your lashes? They look amazing. It was this. It also wore great. No issues with crumbling or smudging or anything like that. So overall, I was very impressed by this mascara, but I just, I don't want to reach for it because it kind of hurts. I still am going to reach for it though. I will. Okay. This is something I am so excited about. I posted a video recently talking about 2024 trend predictions. And one of the big predictions for the year is just that blue beauty is going to be huge. And I love the color blue. It's one of the only colors that I want to experiment with in makeup. So the second I saw that Maybelline came out with colorful liners, I knew I wanted to pick one up. This is their Master Precise All Day Liquid Liner in the shade Cobalt. And I love this. It is such a fun bright blue shade without being neon or like hyper electric blue. I don't think it's to that level. It's definitely bright though. And it's not like pastel-y bright, which I love. I love the depth it has. I think that this is really easy to apply because of the fact that number one, it's not a super wet formula, so it's not messy. When you're blinking, it's not gonna immediately transfer on your lid. And number two, the shape of this felt tip is perfect. It's nice and long, and I feel like it tapers perfectly where it gets nice and thin at the end. I'm loving this. I'm definitely gonna be wearing this in future videos. Well, I say that now, and then you're gonna see me with no liner on at all. Elf came out with new lip liners. This is called their Cream Glide Lip Liner, and I typically don't love pencil liners because I feel like they can just be so dry, but this one's surprisingly creamy for a pencil. And of course, it's not as creamy as something like the Sephora Rouge Gel 
gel liners, I think that those are, you know, pretty much as creamy as it gets for a lip liner. I'm sure there are creamier options, but out of what I own. But I like the actual feel of this a lot. I like applying it unless the actual wood part of the pencil touches my lips and then, ew, I hate the feeling of that. This is very pigmented and has a satiny matte finish. It's not ultra matte or dry looking, which I really like. That's also something I feel can happen with pencil liners. So for, you know, a very basic looking pencil liner, I'm actually really impressed with it, but I just don't love this shade on me. I feel like it doesn't look like the swatches on my lips. So this is another one where I will, you know, check out some other shades, see if I can find something I love. Did I say what shade this is? Um, well, I can't because it's not listed on here. I'll list it in the description box below. I was sent some PR from Milani and there were a couple products I was really excited to try. The first is the Color Fetish Shine Lipstick in the shade Nylon. This looked right up my alley because you guys know how I feel about a sheer shiny lipstick. And swatched it on my hand, it looks beautiful and it feels really nice too. But once I apply this on my lips, it's just very thin and it's not super comfortable or super soft. It's not like it's uncomfortable or extra drying. It just doesn't feel particularly great in the way that I was hoping it would. And it's also more pigmented than I was hoping. It's medium to full pigment instead of being something that's more light to medium or sheer to light. And it's not really shiny on me. I feel like it has more of a satin finish. So it's definitely not a bad product by any means, but given the fact that I like something to feel really comfortable and not be as pigmented and have a glossier look. This is just not for me, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna be a great product for you. It all depends on what we're looking for. This, however, was exactly, exactly what I was looking for. This is the Milani Color Fetish Hydrating Lip Stain. I was sent the shade Bitten Berry. And unlike a lot of other lip stains, this actually has like a gel texture. It feels so comfortable to apply. I absolutely love how it feels. Upon initial application, I would say that you get really nice light to medium coverage with a shiny finish but I personally love blotting this out to make it even more sheer, and then I feel like it's the perfect level of pigment. And then if I apply a clear gloss on top of it to get that hyper glossy effect, I am in love. That is what I have on my lips today. I've been sitting here talking for a while, so I don't know how great it's looking right now, but I have been loving this. I've been wearing it for the past several days. I just think it's so pretty. Perfection, need a million, gonna have to go see what other shades they have. Sorry, wallet. NYX has come out with their own version of a clicky lip balmy thing. It's called the NYX Slick Click Fat Oil Shiny Lip Balm. Obviously, I was so excited to try this based on the title of it. This is not really something that conditions my lips. It's a very thin balm, which is not a bad thing. I could see a lot of you enjoying this for that reason, but for me, I like something to feel more conditioning, especially if it's called a balm. Like, I would expect it to just feel nicer on my lips. And depending on how much you layer it, the amount of shine varies as well. It definitely gets shinier the more that you add, but it never gets super shiny or glossy looking. So again, just not the kind of product that I love to go for, but I also just don't love the shades that I picked up. The shade DM me definitely is just like too bright and violety looking. No, not violet, lilac. The shade Double Tap is definitely pretty. I just feel like it's too vibrant for my personal preference. So um, these were kind of a fail for me, but again, I could see a lot of people enjoying these. I, um, accidentally, I think, purchased so many volumizing lip products. That was not, you know, my intention. I didn't set out to look for the best lip plumper, but I guess we're kind of gonna get a little bit of a mini show down here because I have several. And I don't know why I did that because I don't love lip plumpers. It's not something that I keep in my personal collection, but there just have been so many new launches and a lot of them looked pretty, like really nice shades, really nice shine. So I went all in, I guess. This one right here is the Juvia's Place Volumizing Gloss Stick in the shade Rose. Compared to the NYX product, this is definitely a little bit thicker and cushier and more melty. It's basically like the Makeup by Mario lip serums, but more pigmented and for me, much more cooling on the lips. This doesn't really add a ton of volume for me. So from that perspective, it was kind of a fail, but it's definitely a lot glossier than the NYX product. So that part's a win. So yeah, I don't know, not obsessed, don't hate it, just kind of somewhere in between. Okay, what the heck. The Physicians Formula Diamond Plumpers are products I was super excited to try because I 
I love their diamond gloss. It is so underrated. It is incredible. And so I assumed because this is part of that diamond range and has really similar packaging that it would be the same kind of thing, but just a plumper and in more shades. It's definitely not the same texture as the gloss. So if you're looking for that, I would not recommend purchasing. You'll be disappointed. However, this still feels really good. It's like a jelly balm. It, I don't know, I just really like the feel of it. And it has a really pretty sheer wash of color that's extra shiny, so I was excited about this at first, but it burns. Obviously, because it's a lip plumper, I don't know what I was thinking, but I genuinely was thrown off guard when I first put this on. I was like, wait, what's happening? Oh yeah, it's a lip plumper. And I do get a nice plumping effect with this, but it's not as extreme as the next two. So if you are looking for a lip plumper that comes in pretty shades, but it's sheer and it's nice and glossy and has a nice jelly texture, then I think you'll like these. But if you want something just like so insanely intense, Look out, here they come. NYX Duck Plump. I don't know why I bought three of these. I saw this and was like, yes, this is gonna be perfect. And like, this is nothing that I want or need. But hey, I'm still gonna review it for you. This has a gel cream texture that feels so good at first, but it is extremely pigmented. This is a full pigment product. It's kind of like a liquid lipstick, but not matte and not thin. And it has a glossy finish. So I guess it's not at all like a liquid lipstick, but they're like glossy liquid lipsticks, but just very pigmented is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And it plumps good. It really does. But how? Oh my God. This like, I, it actually hurt. I was sitting here like, ow. Oh my God. This actually hurt me. You hurt me. It's just intense. So Again, like I said, because of that, not something that I need or want, but I just, I felt like I wanted to try it. I mean, on here, it literally says extreme with exclamation points. So at least they warn you. I just can't ever read packaging before I purchase something. So I had no idea what I was getting myself into. But the worst or best, however you look at it, of the bunch is the new Maybelline Lifter Plump. This literally has a red hot chili pepper on it. So again, I should have known. I just, I, I didn't feel adequately prepared. I'd also consider this texture to be like a jelly balm. It's not too thin. It's not too thick. I do like the way that it feels on my lips. It has really pretty sheer to light color coverage. So unlike NYX, it's not something that has a ton of pigment. And I got the shade Mauve Bite, which I think is beautiful. It's definitely not as glossy as I would like it to be. It has a shiny finish, but it's not hyper shiny. Personal preference again. In terms of plump, it also gives me a nice plumping effect. I think that NYX is a little bit better only because it's the worst burn I've ever felt of all time. And this one, while it still burns, does not burn quite to that level. So it's kind of like if I were to put these in order. Oops. Constantly always dropping things everywhere. Oh my God. I literally, wait, that makes me kind of want to cry. I just had a flashback to when I would film videos in the first apartment that I ever filmed videos in, when I had the bed in the background and like little shelves on the walls. And I would always hold up clear organizers of products and they would always topple over and we would call it the Abby drop every time I drop something in a video because I would without fail. If you've been here since then, drop a comment below and I'll cry. Okay, back to this. In terms of plumping, it would go Juvia's plate, Juvia, why'd I say that? Juvia's place, Physician's Formula, Maybelline Lifter, NYX, Duck Plump. <sighs> Brace yourself. Moving on to skincare, we have the Hero Cosmetics Glow Balm Radiant Skin Stick. The ingredients that they highlight in this are linoleic acid, ceramides, and vitamin E. This is interesting. It has a very slippery texture, but at the same time, it's stiff in the sense that it's not super melty, it's not wet, it's definitely not oily. I really like the way it feels. I didn't wanna swipe this directly on my face because I was worried about it removing my sunscreen and the other skincare I had underneath that, so I just used my fingers to apply it, but wow, does this give you jello skin? This makes my skin look so juicy, but without it looking oily, without it looking radiant in like a pearlescent way, like there's no luminizing pigments in it. It literally just makes my skin look like juicy skin. It's amazing. I don't know that I've tried another product exactly like this. I'm sure they exist. I just haven't tried them. So I was really impressed by this. I really like it, but I don't know that I'll ever reach for it. I feel like things like this that come in a stick, I just end up forgetting about them. And I don't really know why that is. It just like doesn't stick with my brain to reach for these products. But maybe if I put this on top of my vanity in my getting ready area, then I will wear it more. Cause on the cheekbones, high points of the face, beautiful underneath makeup, beautiful by itself. It is, it's beautiful. My dream almost came true this close. Cetaphil came out with a higher 
SPF version of the Redness Relieving Daily Facial Moisturizer. And you may or may not know that I love the original of this that only has SPF 20. And I've been saying, please, please, I hope that they come out with a higher SPF. If this was an SPF 50, it would be a game changer. It would be my go-to tinted sunscreen for my fair skin. But this is not exactly the same. I'm actually gonna pump these on the back of my hand now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So this is the original and this, oh! No. <sighs> okay, we're okay. It just landed on my trackpad and not in my keys. Ew. True life. I'm a beauty YouTuber. Okay, so here's the new one. This is the OG. This new one definitely feels thicker. It's not thick, thick. I would say it's like... I don't know, a lighter weight cream, but the original's even lighter weight. And I feel like the original does a better job at moisturizing my skin, despite the fact that it feels a little bit thinner to me. This one, I don't know, I'm just not obsessed with the way that it feels. It's fine, there's nothing like horribly wrong about it, I just don't love it. And as the day went on, I definitely noticed that my skin just didn't feel moisturized. It felt a little bit tight, like I need moisturizer on it, and that definitely does not happen to me with the original. That one gives me great moisture all day long. It has sheer to light coverage with, I would say more of a natural finish. There's a little bit of a glow for sure, but it's not something that's super glowy. So all of that was really nice. And at first I loved the way that it looked on my skin. I was like, okay, even though I'm not obsessed with how it feels, this looks really great. But I feel like this oxidized on my skin. And again, that's not something I've ever experienced with the original. It wasn't horrible, but I definitely did notice once I got into my car and looked in, you know, the mirror, whichever mirror that's called, I just noticed that it looked a little bit orange. It definitely started to oxidize and pull warmer, which is a huge bummer because I feel like that was what I loved about this product so much is that it didn't do that on my skin. And it doesn't at first, the original doesn't at all, but as the day goes on, it does. If this felt amazing on my skin, I would be fine with it because again, it's not like it oxidizes terribly, but because it doesn't feel great, I just feel like this ended up being a fail, which is so upsetting. Wait a minute. This has the exact same percentage of active ingredients. Is this the same, but just labeled higher? Naturium came out with a peptide serum. This is called the Multi-Peptide Advanced Serum, which contains a ton of different ingredients that they're highlighting, including copper peptides, argireline amplified peptide. This also contains ingredients like squalane, shea butter, rice bran extract, ferulic acid, other forms of peptides, lots of hydrating, replenishing ingredients for sure. I know a lot of people were curious to know my thoughts on this versus the ordinary copper peptides. What are they calling that now? Like copper multi-peptide? I don't know something like that. You guys know what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, there's just no way for me to fairly compare the ingredients because they're completely different. Yes, this also has copper peptides, other peptides, amino acids, but they're not the exact same. And they specifically call out that they use encapsulated copper peptides, but they don't disclose the amount. So because of that, I was like, well, let's just test it out, see how it applies, how it looks. And then if I love it, maybe I will pause on the ordinary, test this out, see what happens, but I don't love it. This is a milky serum, which can be a really nice thing. You guys know that if something feels silky and milky, I'll probably be obsessed with it, but this doesn't feel like that. It's not like it feels bad. I just wasn't drooling over the texture in the way that I do my absolute favorite skincare products. So it feels fine. I don't hate it, but I definitely don't love it. And I don't really get any immediate noticeable glow from it in the way that I definitely do with the ordinary copper peptides. And something that I really dislike about this is the fact that it smells like oil. So because I didn't love any of the like sensorial elements of this product, I just don't really want to switch from the ordinary, which I love in that way and love because of the results it gives me to this to test it out. Unless you guys are like dying for me to do that and there's a huge push for me to do that. I don't think that there is. Those are my initial thoughts. I obviously can't tell you guys how this performs versus the ordinary in terms of results on my skin because I did not use this for a long period of time to see results and that would be tough since I have already been using the ordinary for so long. So anyway, uh, a little bit of a flat for me from Naturium. Not terrible, just not for me. Another thing that was a little bit of a flop is their multi 
multi-peptide eye cream. So this also contains a multi-peptide blend, squalane, hyaluronic acid. I feel like they use squalane in a lot of their products. This is supposed to brighten and improve the look of dark circles and visibly smooth fine lines and wrinkles. I do love the fact that this is something that contains peptides and really nice nourishing and replenishing ingredients because you don't always find that in an eye cream. Like there may be an eye cream that I'm obsessed with in terms of texture, but the ingredients are like, Meh. And I do think that the texture of this is nice. It's just nothing incredible. It's nothing really noteworthy. It doesn't really stand out to me in the way that their peptide moisturizer does. That one just has something special about it, something unique. I love that moisturizer. And this one to me just kind of feels like a standard eye cream, you know? So I was sent this in PR along with the serum and the next product I'm going to talk about from Naturium, but not one that I think I'll repurchase once I have used it up. I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind, but I don't think so. This from Naturium, however, is definitely a hit. This is their Phyto Glow Lip Mask. As you can see, I've already put a fat dent in it. Has this not launched yet? Is this breaking news? It's not online yet. I wonder if it'll be launched by the time that this video goes up. Okay, so I cannot read the ingredients to you guys because it doesn't say it on the label and it's nowhere to be found online, but I can tell you that it feels so nice. I know I just put some on, but I want more. It definitely gives me Laneige vibes in the sense that it's a somewhat melty balm, but it's not nearly as melty as Laneige. It's definitely stiffer than that. And it's definitely not super, super thick unless you layer it up, then it will be, but it feels very nice and nourishing to apply. It gives you a really nice shine. So I'm really enjoying this one. The only thing that is, I mean, maybe a win for some of you, but a bummer for me is that it's fragrance free. So unscented, this one truly does not have any smell to me. None of that funky oil smell. You know what? If I'm like breathing in really hard, there's the tiniest bit of vanilla, but I don't smell that when I'm applying it. So definitely one I'll keep reaching for, but if I had to choose between this and Laneige, I would still choose Laneige. All right, you guys, Um, I am scared. This might be the longest new at the drugstore I've ever posted, but we are at the very end. The last product, last but not least, two products, same launch, the native, native, am I okay? Native Girl Scout body washes. When I saw these on the end cap at Target, I was like, there ain't no way. Cookie body washes? Like when I saw those peanut butter do -si on the label of a body wash, I was like, this can't be good. So I couldn't bring myself to buy that one, but I purchased coconut caramel and trefoil. You guys, these smell so good. If anyone's little sister, child, anything is a Girl Scout, will you leave their information below? Cause I want a million boxes. <laughs> when do Girl Scout cookies happen? Oh my gosh, I want so many this year. I haven't gotten them in a while. This smells exactly like the coconut caramel cookie. Trefoils is actually my favorite though, cause it's less sweet and a little bit less intense than coconut caramel. Oh, hey, this is my last product. Do you wanna come up here, bud? And Elsie, you'll come up here too. What do you think? Do you like it? Don't eat it. I'm obsessed with the smell of this. You guys know I love vanilla, I love cake, I love anything like that, and that is exactly what this gives me. In terms of the actual body wash, I mean, it's a body wash. There's nothing really remarkable about it. I would love if this was creamier, just because I really enjoy applying creamy body washes, but no issues. It gets the job done, good. I'm glad I bought these, they smell really good. I drew the line at deodorant. I don't actually know that I would draw the line if they had aluminum in them, but because they're aluminum free, I, I don't mess with that. Elsie, you wanna come say hi to everyone? Elsie, where's mommy baby? Elsie! Tuda! Where's Tuda? <gasps> Honey! Come here, Elsie! Will you come here? I wanna say hi to you and I know everyone does. Okay, Quince, so you can come up too. Hold on. <gasps> Beauty queen from a movie scene. I'll bring you up too, buddy. <laughs> What makes me happiest? I love you guys so much. All right, you guys, thanks for watching my video. I'm gonna do this sign off quickly cause they're not gonna tolerate this for long. Thank you so much. Leave some comments below. Can't wait to chat with you. Like, subscribe, do everything that I normally tell you to do. Stay tuned for my next video. It'll be up soon, but until then, I hope you have a great few days. Bye guys. You guys look like supermodels. You're perfect. <laughs> <laughs>